Are you in the home buying process? Whether you're a first time home buyer, or maybe you've bought a home before, but it's been a few years. In this video, I'm gonna go through the home buying process, give you several home buying tips, and a home buying checklist to make sure the process goes as smoothly as possible for you, and we're gonna get into it right after this. Hi there, my name is Patrick Fields and I've been helping nice people buy great homes in Edmonton since 2002. If you're seriously looking to get into a home, then just follow these steps and you'll be cruising like Connor McDavid. Step number one, mortgage pre-approval. Why? Because you can't go shopping without knowing how much money you have to spend. It's quite simple. And don't rely on an app or a quick mortgage calculator. Mortgage rules in Canada have changed a few times over the past few years, and it's not that you won't be approved, but the banks might not lend you as much money as you wanted. Make sure you contact a mortgage professional to get a full pre-approval and get them the necessary paperwork that they need. There's income tax statements, bank statements, letters of employment, notice of assessment. And those are just a few of the items that you'll need to collect. You're buying a home here, not a pair of jeans. If you need to watch my video on the difference between mortgage pre-approval or versus pre-qualifying, it's just up there. Step number two, find a real estate agent that you like and fully trust. Why? This is the largest financial transaction of your life. Don't leave it to someone that you don't think is fully capable of handling all the important details. Not only do they need to help guide you to find the best home that suits your family and lifestyle, there's also contract law, a ton of paperwork, real property reports, title review, and the negotiating. You need to ensure that you are not overpaying for the home you like, and there's nothing worse than not getting your keys on possession day due to something that was missed. Step number three, determine what you want in your home and where you want to be. Sit down with your agent to determine the type of home you want to be in, now whether that's a house, townhouse, a low rise or a high rise condo, the area you want to live, the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, and any other features that you'd like. Your agent will enter this into Paragon, which is our realtor software, where we can enter the criteria that you want and come up with a list of homes that are currently for sale. We can really narrow it down based on your specific requirements. Say you wanted to look only at bungalows, or only at homes with walkout basements, or townhomes or duplexes with a double garage, for example. Honestly, this can save weeks of looking at the wrong homes and eliminate tons of frustration. Step number four, start looking at homes. Once you've determined how much of a mortgage you can afford and you have a selection of homes based on your search criteria, you can now begin looking at homes. Now this is the fun part and can really separate good real estate agents from inexperienced agents. As you walk through the homes, your agent should be able to give you information on the approximate age of the shingles, what type of windows it has, whether they're PVC, wood, or aluminum sliders, the approximate age of the furnace, type of water lines running through the house, whether they are copper, PEX, or poly B, which did have issues from the 1980s to the 1990s, whether the electrical panel is a 60 or 100 amp service, and if it's copper or aluminum wiring and then do a tour of the outside to determine if the grading outside the home is good or bad. This picture here is an example of something that I saw over the weekend with a buyer uh, of what a homeowner should never do. As soon as I saw this, I knew we would find this picture. And that's mold. And we knew that there was going to be more moisture and problems behind that basement wall. Make sure your agent can point out things like this. You don't want to spend five or six hundred dollars for a home inspector to tell you that the home needs new windows or a new furnace. I've heard many stories from inspectors of cases where the buyer walked away from a home because of something that easily could have been pointed out to them by an experienced agent. Okay, so once you've found a nice home and you're happy with everything on the inside, you can move on to step number five, and that is make an offer. Your agent should give you the following information. The city assessment, 
Now, it's not a true value of the home, but it gives a ballpark of how much the city thinks it's worth and can sometimes be a good gauge on value. Step number two, they should run a few different comparative market analysis on the home. You want to know the amount that other homes in that neighborhood have sold for and the amount that comparable homes in that area or zone have sold for. You do not want to overpay for your home. In real estate, you don't make money when you sell a home, you actually make money when you buy the home. Make sure your agent uses everything they can to fight to get you the absolute best possible price. And then step three, they should show you the current title. Don't wait until it gets to the lawyer to find out that there's an issue and you can't move in on the possession day you had agreed to. You want to make sure that there are no liens on title and that you understand any restrictive covenants or easements that are registered on that title. Step number six is your due diligence. Once your offer has been accepted by the seller, so you've reached an agreement on the price, possession day, the chattels to be included, any terms of the contract, the amount of the initial and additional deposits, your agent will forward that purchase contract and any addendums or schedules and the highlight sheets to your mortgage professional, who will start to work with the lender to get your mortgage approved. The agent will stay in contact with them to see if they need an appraisal and they will get that coordinated with the seller's agent. If you're buying a condo, you'll need to review your condominium documents. If you haven't already, watch my video on condo buying tips and nine mistakes to avoid. You can pause this and check that one out if you like. Only once your financing is approved or you're given the go ahead from your mortgage professional, do you move on to your home inspection. The licensed home inspector will check out the home from top to bottom and do a very cool infrared scan of the home to ensure that there are no moisture issues. They go up on the roof, look at the shingles, flashing, chimney, inside the attic at the insulation, they look at the electrical panel, uh, the plumbing, they test all the electrical outlets, they look for any potential issues and give the home an extremely thorough and objective look. Once you complete your home inspection, there are three options that you can take. First, if everything is good, you can accept the home at the price you've negotiated uh, and proceed with your purchase. Secondly, if there were some issues with the home, you can ask for money off the purchase price. I do not ever ask for work to be completed by a seller because it can just lead to problems. Don't ask a seller to repair something. How you want it done will not be the way they do it and will be a nightmare to sort out after the fact. Thirdly, if the seller is not willing to give you the amount of money that you wanted off of the purchase price or there are major issues found during the home inspection, you can just walk away from the offer. Your deposit is fully protected and you will get that back in full. If you do walk away, you start the process all over again and hopefully have better luck the next time. If you do remove your conditions, then congratulations, you bought a home. You just need to get your mortgage insurance and utilities hooked up before possession day and I'll have a video outlining those steps coming right up. Well, that's it. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If I can ever answer any questions, please reach out to me. My contact information is here. And if you like this video, please leave me a comment and consider subscribing to my channel. You can hit that little bell to be notified when my next video comes out. I truly hope you have a fantastic day and until next time.